I'm Micah Smith, and in this quick tip, we're going to take a look at how you can export a bot from the Automation 360 control room using the control room API. Okay, so we did a previous video on how to export from the control room, just going through the user interface. In this video, we're going to specifically look at using the control room API. So let's take a look at a couple of prerequisites that are required. So first, you have to have permissions to export. And again, these are addressed through the roles that you have for your specific user account within your control room. You have to have the export bots defined as a part of your role. And I'm going to bring up my control room real quick so we can see this. Uh, this is a custom role that I've created. It's called custom underscore bot developer. But notice that as a part of that, export bots is included, right? So if you don't have this specific permission, you won't be able to export, whether you're using the control room API or whether you're using the control room uh, web client itself, you won't be able to export. So make sure that you have that as a part of your role. You also wanna have access to the bots you wish to, act, uh, to export from a public directory. So if you're gonna export them from public, you do have to have access to that specific bot. Unique to the control room API though, is you do have the ability to export from private directories. So unlike with the uh, using the web client, where you have to export from public, using the API, you do have the ability to export from private directories. The second component is you have to be using Automation 360. Uh, we previously called this Automation Anywhere Enterprise A2019, now it's Automation 360, but you have to be using that version of the product. This export functionality does not exist in Community Edition. You'll be able to authenticate, just like I'll show here in a second using uh, Postman, but you won't actually be able to do the export. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is going to be for people who are using Automation 360 uh, if they want to export bots. Now, before we jump into this, why and where would you actually use this with a Control Room API? Well, a couple of cool use cases I can think of. First would be if I want to create a bot that's going to maybe export bots uh, every night, right? Or every week. Maybe once a week, I'm gonna export all the bots from my control room. I'm gonna save them off into another directory for safekeeping. That could be a bot. Uh, I could also do another use case where I'm exporting bots from one environment and automatically importing them to another. So maybe my process to migrate from production is the click of a button. I give it the bot name or the ID from uh, one control room. It will read that value. It will export the bot. It will export all the dependencies and move that up to my production control room. So those are some use cases of where you might actually use this. But let's jump over to Postman now and take a look at how this might be used. So here we are in Postman, and this is a collection that I created and shared sometime last year. We'll have a link to it here in the description below. We did a whole video, actually two videos, on how to use this collection and how to actually run bots from Postman directly. Um, but I use Postman to test a lot of the API endpoints that I use, uh, actually all of the API endpoints that I use, and I use it to save the um, API endpoints that I've used so that I have like an example of how they work. And that's exactly what we've done with this collection. So you can download this collection, you can try out all of the endpoints that we have defined here. You can also access those endpoints by uh, going to your control room URL and doing slash swagger slash at the end. Uh, and that will give you more resources for different control room endpoints. I don't have every single endpoint added to this collection. I just have the ones that were most commonly used in the use cases that I was working with. So uh, first off, we're gonna start with the authentication. And the authentication is gonna allow us to authenticate. It's also gonna give us a token. Before we do that, I'm gonna jump back over here to our control room though, um, because I wanna actually pick a bot that we're gonna export. You can do this through the process of like navigating through the uh, control room repository management APIs, but that kind of goes beyond the scope of this video. So we're just gonna go like this, right? I can see here that within my bot repository, I have a task bot in the private repository that has an ID of 404, which is a little bit ironic because that's a API return code, but we're gonna use this. So we're gonna go with 404 here. So just remember that. Now we're gonna come back to Postman. I'm gonna authenticate. So I have created environment variables. I suggested that in the other video, you could do the same. Uh, be sure to check that video out if you want to re replicate exactly what I'm doing. But basically, i am got a body here and I'm passing in a variable that represents my username and represents my password. So let's go ahead and hit send. 
That's gonna authenticate me and it's gonna return to me a token. And I'll use that token for my subsequent um, endpoints that we'll be using. So I'm gonna minimize authentication and I'm gonna head over to the um, uh, bot lifecycle management collection uh, here represented by BLM. The first thing I'm gonna do is use the post for a export, right? And so this is a, uh, a, a rest post command that's gonna allow me to uh, generate an export of a file. Now, notice here I have a sample body that's included. I also have a link to uh, the URL for the docs portal if you wanted to go and check out the documentation related to this specific endpoint. But the first thing we wanna do is give our export a name. Now, the bot that we were exporting was called uh, basic error handling. So I'm just gonna call it that. Uh, I can't type and talk at the same time, apparently. Now, when you give your export a name, this has to be unique in your control room because what's gonna happen is your control room is gonna build a zip file of all of the files and dependencies related to this bot for export. So I need to give it a name that's somewhat unique. I'm recording this on 524, so I'm gonna put 5-24- 21. That way it's at least unique per day for me. Uh, you could use whatever naming system you want to do. Now the name really doesn't mean anything. It's just for our zip. What really matters here is our file ID. Now we had said that the file ID that we wanted to export was 404. Obviously this is a collection so I could enter more than one bot ID if I wanted to. For the purposes of this demo we're just going to be doing a single bot so I'm going to put 404. If you're following along with me, if you're doing this yourself, your bot ID is gonna be completely different. So just keep that in mind. It, it, I guess it could be the same, but most likely it's gonna be a different bot ID. So you wanna grab the bot ID from your control room. Like I said, if you wanna do all this from the API itself, you could use the repository management API endpoints. That would allow you to navigate around your different directories within your control room, um, but we're gonna use the 404. The last part here is this include packages is true. We're gonna include all the packages with our export. So I'm gonna hit send. Okay, now that returned to me a request ID. I'm gonna copy this request ID because we're gonna use it with this status endpoint. So the status endpoint is going to allow us to check the status of our export request. And here we can see that for this request ID, which is what we just provided, we can see the type says export and the status is completed with a download file name of error, uh, basic error handling and then the date. What I can also do is copy this download file ID. I'm gonna copy that one. And if I go to the download endpoint, I can provide that download um, ID and hit send. Now at this point, it's actually gonna start downloading the file. Now. Because we're in Postman, this just looks like uh, garbage to us, right? But what we can actually do here is on this right-hand side, we can go to Save Response to File. And I'm just going to call this one response.zip. That's fine. We'll hit Save. Oh, it already exists. Uh, all right, let's give it something else. We called it um, Basic Error Handling. 5, 24, 21. Let's hit save. I know that that one's unique. So if we go back out to our downloads directory here, we should be able to see that we have a file called basic error handling. If I open that up, here I can see all of the packages that were exported in support of that bot. If I go here to automation anywhere and then bots and then quick tips, I'll see the bot itself that I had exported. If we go back to our control room, we can see the same thing. Did we close that window? No, oh, here it is, sorry. All right, it logged us out because we were using the same username and password on the control room API, that's fine. I've logged back in here. This is my basic error handling bot. I'm gonna close it. We can see that here it was inside of our quick tips folder, so that's correct. We can also see here, if we go to activity in the historical tab, we can see all of our exports. And right here I can see this was the export that we just did, bot error handling basics. I could download it directly from the control room if I wanted to. We had already downloaded it back to Postman, so that's fine. One thing I wanna point out here, 
if you try to export a larger bot and do it directly from within Postman, you might get an error. Notice here that the size of this was 3.56 meg. Uh, mine was a relatively small bot, uh, packages included. Yours might be too large for Postman. For the sanctity of keeping Postman up and running, uh, they don't allow for responses over a certain size. So if you get an error here, it doesn't necessarily mean the control room is screwed up. It may just mean that the response is too large for Postman to handle. And so you'll want to actually do this in another programming language. You could do this in Java. You could do this in JavaScript. If you wanted to see what that exact response looks like, you would need to save that stream out to a file. And then you'd have the exact same thing that I just had, a zip file that has my bots, their related packages and things like that. Okay, so hopefully this quick tip was helpful. If you want to export files from the Control Room API, this is the way to do it. My name is Micah Smith. Go be great.